Hailing frequencies are open. Today, we're diving into something truly special, a gift for Star Trek fans across generations. William Shatner has returned to play Captain James T. Kirk for the first time in over 30 years in OTOYs and Roddenberry's Archives short film 765874 Unification. Yes, you heard that right. This isn't just a nostalgia trip. It's a beautifully crafted love letter to fans of the original series. It also premiered on the 30th anniversary of Star Trek Generations, which was the first feature film of the Next Generation crew. That film debuted on November 18, 1994. And as I noted before, this is a film that is tr a true love letter to the entire Star Trek legacy. I'm Will Polk, host of Cena Nerd Presents Blur Trek, and also co-host and producer of the Cena Nerd Podcast with Sarah Belmont. Let's break all this short film down. There will be spoilers. First, let's talk about the monumental return of Shatner as Kirk. Seeing him back and exuding Kirk's charisma and everything that is awesome about James T. Kirk feels like being reunited with the old film. The filmmakers used a mix of practical effects, de-aging, digital de-aging, and also prosthetics to bring Kirk back to life as we remember him. Not only do we, the Shatner, embody Kirk as he appeared in Star Trek Generation, but the film also gives us glimpses of his and other interactions with iconic characters from the Star Trek universe, including Gary Mitchell. With original actor, 87-year-old Gary Lockwood, the aged and playing him, we also get uh, Yoma Curtis Colt again from The Cage. We also get Savick. That's right, Savick, Robin Curtis, has returned to play that iconic character in the Star Trek universe. And we also see the actor behind her. Uh, that character behind her is Spock's son, Surak. Uh, we also get uh, Crusher. We also we saw that in, in, the, in the credits. We also get the character Yor from Star Trek Discovery, who's originally from the Star Trek Kelvin timeline, but he also was in the third season, I believe, of Star Trek Discovery. And then, brace yourselves, we get Spock. That's right, Spock himself is, is also in this film, uh, played by stand-in actor Lawrence Selleck. Uh, he's, so we get all of these various characters. Speaking of Spock, this short is very emotionally charged. It starts with the cold open with the line from Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, which if you remember from the Kobayashi Maru, that was uh, Kirk talks to Savick about, and I quote, how we deal with death is as at least important as how we deal with life. Really, tonally, that sets up everything in this short film. It features an incredibly poignant scene of Spock on his deathbed in the Kelvin universe with Kirk once again witnessing the loss of his closest friend. Kirk, being again, being brought back to life in this, in this short, uh, does remind me of the prescient words that he had in Star Trek V, which still rings true to me in some regards in that he will die alone because two of his closest friends, Spock here in the Kelvin universe and presumably McCoy, are not with them. And this is also a, a, a tie back to his to Kirk's death in, in Star Trek Generations as well, because in, in that film uh, he he died he, he died alone in the deflector control room, uh, and, and of course Scotty and Chekhov, who are you know crewmates, but you know, by who probably aren't as you know clearly not as close to him as Spock and McCoy were. Uh, were were not with him, so I thought that was a you know again all, all these little interwoven notes from Star Trek Generations is playing out in this short film. Uh, the film doesn't just uh, explore Kirk and Spock's relationship on screen, but it also resonates with the real world history between Shatner and and Leonard Nimoy. Uh, so many fans may or may not know this, but. Uh, their friendship was was strained in, in Nimoy's final years, and, and knowing that Kirk Nimoy's widow served as an executive producer on this project, 
adds a deeper personal level and layer to this short film. In a companion video, Shatner talks about his, uh, opens up about his relationship and it was with Nimoy, and also about writing a, a heartfelt letter to Nimoy shortly before his passing, and reflects on that and the emotions of, of losing a close film. So honestly, this adds so much more depth to this film because it's not just Star Trek, it's also a very human story. And as I noted, this film isn't just a, a, a about Kirk and, and Spock, though. It ties characters from all across the Star Trek universe, from the original series to the Kelvin universe to the present day New Trek, as a lot of people like to call it. That's on, on Paramount Plus with the shows such as Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek Picard. Uh, it celebrates Prodigy, except Lord X. It celebrates what makes Star Trek so enduring. Its characters, relationships, and the themes of exploration and unity. Fans of the original series will feel the most nostalgia with uh, seeing Gary Mitchell's return, which is a real deep cut. Uh, we also get that from the original series films with Savage's return. But there's other things in the in this short film so that other wherever you came into the Star Trek universe, there's something here for everyone. As far as the production values of this short film, it is top notch. It's a blend of old and new. The digital de-aging, the mix of the practical and digital effects just, doesn't just de-age the 93-year-old William Shatner. It fully immerses us in the Star Trek universe when we see things like San Francisco and other parts of the, the Star Trek universe you know, across planets in, 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 the, in the universe. Uh, it fully immerses us in the Star Trek universe we know, know and love. The stand-in actors for both Kirk and Spock, uh, we see some examples here, again, of, of, of the de-aging of, of Shatner, uh, both William Shatner himself, but also the center film, the center image there with Sam Whitworth Whitwer playing him, and also Lawrence Selleck, who uh, has portrayed Spock not only in this short film, but also the other films from this short series are seamlessly integrated with Shatner's performance, capturing the essence of these characters while honoring the actors who originally played them, whether they're in this film or sadly passed on you know, from this plane. The attention to detail and recreating the look and feel of these iconic moments is, is mind-blowing. And there's hardly any dialogue in this film whatsoever. So it's purely facial and emotive acting, which just also helps it resonate on such a deeper level. What really makes unification stand out for me is its emotional core. It's a meditation on friendship, it's a meditation on legacy and reconciliation, not just for Kirk and Spock, but for Shatner himself. Knowing that this project gave Shatner a sense of closure with, with Nimoy, to me, is incredibly moving. It's a reminder of how powerful storytelling can be both on and off screen. Quickly moving to some Easter eggs and some theory spiraling. Uh, this, this is the fourth project in the 75874 short film series. Uh, the number 765874 comes from cult serial number. As I mentioned before, seeing Gary Mitchell return is a deep cut from the second pilot of Star Trek, Where No Man Has Gone Before. He was also a, a close friend of Kirk who he had that he lost in the line of duty. Uh, yours, I mentioned earlier, is from Star Trek Discovery. There was a tie-in from Star Trek Picard, uh, where we see Kirk's remains from the Section 31 archive, which, you know, again, uh, they may have used those remains to to, to reanimate Kirk, and uh, whether it was the you know, Star Trek, the Starfleet itself, or maybe one of the theory spiral says, maybe it was a Wesley Crusher, or uh, or your, or one of the other travelers. That's you know, I would love to hear your theories as far as what what that was. Uh, we also see Kirk's badge from Viridian Three. Uh, we also see a shot of the Enterprise D again on that same planet. Uh, we also get the a, a, a Colt holding the photo frame and crew photo from the Enterprise A that we also saw the Kelvin Universe Spock hold in Star Trek Beyond in a in-universe tribute to to Leonard Nimoy's passing. 
uh, in between uh, the the making of Star Trek Into Darkness and and Star Trek Star Trek Beyond in that film. Plus, as I noted before, we had the the, the Crusher character, Yor, and as some theory spirals that are out there is that th these individuals are all the travelers who uh, was first introduced. Um, in Star Trek the Next Generation, but then Star Trek Prodigy uh, tied that uh, the, the Travelers with Wesley Crusher and Gary Seven uh, in in the most recent series of that of that show. So uh, and maybe that how that set up this interdimensional inner universe interactions between that brought Prime Universe Kirk into the Kelvin Universe to interact with uh, Prime Universe Spock before his passing. So. As I said, this is a must watch for Star Trek fans. Seven six five eight seven four Unification is more than just a short film. It is a tribute to the enduring legacy of Star Trek and a heartfelt thank you to the fans who've kept the franchise alive for decades. Whether you're a diehard fan of the original series or someone who just jumped on board in the Kelvin universe or the more recent shows on Paramount Plus, this short has something for everyone. Seeing Kirk back as Kirk is worth the watch alone, but the deeper emotional layers and stunning production values make this a must-see for all Star Trek fans. What did you think of William Shatner's return as Captain Kirk? Did universe, unification hit you in the fills as much as it did me? I know I definitely got choked up seeing them seeing the, those scenes of Kirk and Spock together again. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you love this review, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the world of Star Trek and beyond on both the Cena Nerd Podcast Prime and also Cena Nerd Presents Blur Trek. Live long and prosper.